why do people think Kuki Shinobu is trash? Like, I understand being underwhelmed by her, or, like, confused about how to build her since she's a bit different from the types of units we've gotten in the past, but, like, trash? Really? I mean, don't get me wrong, Shinobu is by no means a perfect unit or secretly busted or anything like that, but she's definitely not trash. Shinobu is actually a very good unit, she's just not at all what we're used to and definitely not what most people were expecting. So today, in this video, I'd like to show you what I mean when I say Shinobu is good, and hopefully we can dispel some misconceptions around her kit. Now please note that this video is not meant to discredit anyone's opinions of Shinobu or any builds or calculations or guides provided by Theory Crafters. This video only represents my own opinion as a BP Welkin player who regularly 36 stars the Abyss, which I am only mentioning because it gives me some level of credibility when talking about meta and theory crafting and math and all that kind of stuff. And it is therefore only meant to respond to common trends within the community at large by offering an alternate perspective. My opinion should not invalidate anyone else's, so please keep that in mind as you watch the rest of this video. And now that we have the important bits established, let's start things off by talking about Shinobu's basic roles and overall use cases. Shinobu has three roles that she's designed to fill for any team. She's designed to be a healer, a buffer, and a reaction trigger, damage dealer. Now, Shinobu is good in each of these roles, but she's rarely the optimal choice in terms of raw numbers. I think this is where people get hung up on the idea that she's bad, which I don't think is very fair. Versatility in a unit is valuable, even if it's not something you're looking for in your account, and her damage actually isn't that negligible, it just comes from a place that we're not really used to looking. Your account may not have a good use for her, but that really doesn't stop Shinobu from being cost-effective to build, especially for newer players, and it definitely doesn't make her a trash unit. For her to do her job well, you only need to level her skill for healing purposes, and then you need to take her to level 90 since her healing scales on HP and reaction damage scales on level. You can leave her burst and normals unleveled since her talent multipliers won't contribute to her reaction damage at all. It's kind of similar to how you build a swirl unit. After that, building her is cheap and easy because she scales on stats that aren't high in demand, so you're very likely to have good pieces for her just rotting away in your inventory. And yes, you can argue that her weapon options are very limited, but they're also really accessible. Iron Sting is what I personally run on her, and that one is craftable, and you don't need any refines on it, so it's pretty cheap to get and very easy to get. And before you point out her split scaling and how that makes her difficult to build, let me point out that this actually works in her favor because it gives her additional flexibility. We'll talk more about the specifics of this later, but because there's only really an 18% loss in healing output when switching from HP to Elemental Mastery, the two builds are basically interchangeable. Besides, any and all of her worthwhile damage comes from reactions, which don't require any crit stats at all. They just need her leveled to 90. Her actual multipliers are bad, and I won't excuse them, and they're just really not worth mentioning or calculating for. But that's really just more incentive to build her solely for reaction damage, so don't waste your resources trying to invest into her crit stats, and I'm talking about even in the case of a Favonia sword. If you happen to have crit stats, great. If you don't, don't try for it. It's honestly not worth it. Just use an iron sting. But even if you don't need versatility and you don't believe me when I say her split scaling is actually fine and not a problem, it is still worth recognizing that Shinobu is actually a really comfortable unit to play with on a team. Shinobu can heal and buff with near 100% uptime and it's not attached to a stationary AoE or locked behind an energy-hungry burst like most of the healers in the game. This makes rotation smoother, more flexible, and it's easier to change strategies to adapt to highly mobile enemies on the field without losing your buffs or healing. And yeah, I, of course I can get higher damage with Bennett, but is it always comfortable? No, it's a pain to play around his field. Seeing massive Ushi nukes on a mono geo comp, for example, is super fun, but it's not always practical and it can also be aggravating to cast Bennett's burst and then watch the enemy yeet itself halfway across the field so you can't even make use of it. Shinobu makes this a non-issue since her healing just follows you. I will happily trade a little bit of damage for a more comfortable, flexible, and smoother experience any day of the week. Maybe you wouldn't, but either way, it's really good that there is this option. I know I've just made a lot of claims, and some of you probably think I'm ingesting hefty amounts of copium, so let me just uh, take a step back and explain my reasoning for all of this, starting with her healing capabilities. 
Shinobu's healing comes in the form of a mobile orbital, which follows you around after she sacrifices 30% of her max HP. Now, if you're worried about her whole low HP playstyle thing, well, stop it. Because she scales off of HP and she has HP as an ascension stat, she generally ends up with more HP at 50% than most characters have at 100%, even at moderate investment. So she can take a real beating even at low HP. And if you've been told Shinobu's healing sucks, well, you've also been lied to. Shinobu is one of the rare healers whose healing is tied to her skill rather than her burst, which lets her heal consistently without any energy requirements. In addition, her healing ticks are fast with near 100% uptime, so even with lower multipliers on her healing, she's very competitive with other healers. When it comes to healing over time especially, she outheals many of them. Plus, she's the only 4-star healer sans Barbara who can heal consistently without their burst, auto-attacking on field, or a stationary healing field. For context, more than comparison, Barbara can only heal other units up to 7 times in 20 seconds because the first heal on her skill will always heal her first. But this comes with the caveat that Barbara is receiving the energy particles needed to extend her skill duration. Otherwise, she only heals 3 times and the ticks are… so slow. Shinobu can heal any character 8 times over 12 seconds without constellations. Over a 20 second period, to compare to Barbara, Shinobu is actually healing about 13 times. And yes, Barbara's healing is higher per tick, but not by the like 200% plus that it would need to be in order to outheal Shinobu. Shinobu does lack the emergency healing brought by Barbara's burst, but if you heal fast and consistently with no downtime, you don't really need the panic button, do ya? And yes, there are enemies like the Rift Wolves that will hit you with corrosion, which will wear down the HP of every one of your party members, including the ones that are off field, but Shinobu's healing ticks are really fast. You'll easily get in at least one heal on any character you swap in before the swapping cooldown even finishes. This is comparable to a unit like Bennett who can also heal the on field character only. His ticks are a half a second faster than hers, but the swapping cooldown still applies to him. So if this swap healing isn't an issue for Bennett users, then it shouldn't be an issue for Shinobu users either, especially since she can heal you up to 100% HP as well. And like I mentioned earlier, her split scaling isn't really a problem. It actually allows for two very different builds, a hyper healer for mono element teams and a mixed reaction damage dealer plus healer for mixed element teams. Now, in non-reaction comps like Mono Geo and I guess Mono Electro if you really want to run that, you can build her with pure HP for the highest healing potential, which is about 18% higher than full elemental mastery without accounting for any substats. But if you want to run her in a reaction comp like Taser or Overload, you can easily build her with full elemental mastery without losing out on too much healing while also picking up a considerable amount of damage which we will again talk about later. Now, I personally ended up settling on a mixed comp that uses an Elemental Mastery Clock, Cup, and an HP Headpiece along with a craftable Iron Sting. Before any substats, this nets her around 34,000 HP and roughly 350 EM. This lets her heal around 3,000 HP per tick with her passives active, which roughly translates to around 39,000 HP healed in a 20 second window. For context, not comparison, Barbara with the same talent levels, prototype, amber, and a full HP set heals 3,300 per tick, which translates to around 23,000 HP healed in 20 seconds. The big difference is due to Barbara's slow ticks and long cooldowns, and this is also still accounting for her getting consistent energy generation so that she can extend the duration of Melody Loop long enough to actually hit the 20 seconds. Now you could argue that Sayu is a better comparison than Barbara because she has the same speed ticks as Shinobu and has higher multipliers on her healing so she should be a better healer overall, right? But with a full attack percent build with no substats, she's healing around 3,400 per tick plus the initial 4,000 for a total of 27,800 over 20 seconds. You'll notice that Sayu's healing is still lower than Shinobu's even with a larger heal because her healing is tied to her burst which lasts for 12 seconds and has a 20 second cooldown on a stationary field. That's 8 seconds of downtime where she's not healing at all. 
Now, this comparison is not meant to suggest that one character is better than the other. It's only to provide context about why I say people are misinformed when they say Shinobu's healing is bad. It's not bad, it's just a smaller tick and there are a lot more of them so it looks like less healing. The bottom line here is that Shinobu has fast ticks, mobile healing, no energy restrictions or conditions on her healing, and near 100% uptime without constellations. So I feel like I've made my case for her good healing capabilities, so let's move on to damage, huh? I will start this section by saying that I will not defend Shinobu's raw elemental damage multipliers. They are abysmal. I wouldn't even level her burst unless you really want to because all of its real damage will come from its reactions and not from its personal multipliers. That's more like bonus damage that you can get if you really want to spend the resources. You kind of have to think of her like you do Sucrose. Sucrose's damage mostly comes from Swirl and not from her Animo damage multipliers that she gets from any of her talent levels. For that reason, you don't have to level any of her talents, including her normals, in order to get her Swirl damage. It's basically the same concept. You can think of this as a detriment, but I think that's a little misleading. Because Shinobu's skill and burst damage multipliers are so bad, there's also zero incentive to invest into crit or attack percent, which is really nice because those are already highly contested pieces. I mean, you can run her as an on-field physical DPS if you really want to, but doing so compromises all of her healing for the most part. It also compromises her reaction damage and her burst damage, meaning that you'd need a second healer and that kind of just defeats the point. It's not great, but you can do it. But if you want practical damage from her, you need to give her a lot of elemental mastery and level her to 90. I know I've said that like five times already. But the nice thing is, most units don't want elemental mastery artifacts or weapons, so you should have an easier time freeing them up for Shinobu. Even if elemental mastery pieces are statistically just as difficult to farm for as many other main stat pieces, Shinobu doesn't need to be min-maxed on attack percent, crit rate, and crit damage, which should let you forego fishing for better substats unless you need more HP. That makes it a little bit easier to get her stuff even if you don't have the right pieces already in your inventory. Building a non-animo unit like this feels really, really weird because no other electro unit wants to be built like this. Since electro doesn't have access to an amplifying reaction, you usually just have to stack attack percent and crit stats and try to capitalize on the high multipliers most electro units have in order to deal good damage. If you ran those units in something like a taser team, the reaction damage you got from the electro units triggering the reaction thus far was relatively small and considered basically bonus damage. It was never really worth optimizing your electro units for elemental mastery to boost those small reaction numbers over attack percent and crit damage just because of scaling. But Shinobu is the exact opposite of this. She has low multipliers, which encourages stacking elemental mastery, and she's the only electro unit that can justify building full elemental mastery without sacrificing her own damage, because she doesn't really have any. Now, whenever we talk about reaction damage dealers, we have to talk about their internal cooldown or their ICD on how often they can trigger reactions. Shinobu has standard ICD on her skill and burst and a weaker elemental application overall. This could be seen as a detriment, but it actually helps to ensure that she will be the one triggering the reaction and not just applying an element, and this is really important for her. If her elemental application was too frequent and too strong, she would become an enabling unit rather than a reacting unit and then she really wouldn't have access to any meaningful damage. That said, she does gain an additional ability at Constellation 4 that has no ICD which can give her another 2 reactions every 5 seconds. That's 2-3 to three triggers per skill for another 4-6 to six instances of reaction damage providing that you have some good pyro or hydro application to react with. Now I don't have Constellation for so I can't test this in practicality, but because it is a 5 second cooldown, I think it's unlikely that it interferes with elemental application enough to decrease overall damage by allowing another element to steal the electro reaction. Okay, so let's create a practical example with a very easy to obtain 450 elemental mastery. 
Shinobu's skill will react four times due to ICD, allowing her to deal around 25,000 total electrocharge reaction damage over her skill's 12 second duration. That could potentially increase to around 50,000 reaction damage at Constellation 4, accounting for the four additional reactions. At around 1,000 elemental mastery, which is a little bit harder to get because you really have to min max for it, she can do over 40,000 reaction damage in that same period with the four original ticks. She can do 80,000 damage with Constellation 4. I think that's pretty respectable for an off-field healer, especially when it's constant with literally no downtime. As an additional source of damage, Shinobu can actually make really good use of the clam set. You can conservatively hit about 35,000 total damage within 12 seconds with a full HP% percent build and a healing bonus circlet, just from the bubble procs, which is nothing compared to the illustrious Kokomi, but it's better than just about any other healer except Chi Chi because it's actually pretty consistent. The only time I think this would be worth running over like a tenacity set is if the characters in the team are like Yelan and don't scale off of attack at all. Still, it's worth pointing out that she can use it pretty well since it boosts her healing potential and nets you some bonus damage, so if that's your thing, well, that's an option. But speaking of the tenacity set, Shinobu is objectively the best user of the tenacity of the Millilith set. There's little room for debate on this, and this is the one biggest boon she has because the tenacity set is very strong. It's just that not many units can actually use it. Tenacity gives your whole team a 20% attack buff and increases your shield strength by 30%. However, the buff only lasts for about 3 seconds and can only be triggered by the character's skill, specifically, not the burst. This is the same attack buff you can get from a No Bless set, only that the buff lasts for 12 seconds on that one and over 30 characters can use it pretty well. By comparison, there are only 9 characters that can effectively use the Tenacity set. Zhongli, Kokomi, Albedo, Fischl, Shinyan, Yaimiko, Raiden Shogun, Chi-Chi, and Shinobu. And of these units, only Zhongli, Kokomi, Chi-Chi, and Shinobu can make use of it without actually losing any damage. Zhongli and Kokomi both benefit from the two-piece HP% percent boost, but their pillar and jellyfish can be really annoying to reposition and play around. It's kind of restrictive. Zhongli especially because if you really want to make use of his pillar pulse, you have to use geo constructs all over the place and I don't know about you, but playing around these things annoys the crap out of me. I just, I hate it, it's not worth it. Chi Chi is actually a great tenacity user and I've used her a lot, but due to high cooldowns you either have to deal with a 15 second downtime or you'll have to run sacrificial sword on her and that's kind of annoying. But Shinobu has at most 3 seconds of downtime on her skill, a large AoE for her electro pulses, and her skill moves with you, making her really easy to keep that buff up with. And yeah, on a team you could just run Noblesse instead and get the same buff, but anyway, why not both? The buff you get from Noblesse actually stacks with Tenacity, so you could run Shinobu alongside a Noblesse user and get 40% attack buff for your entire team plus the 30% shield strength. With the right burst cooldown and rotation, that would be like having a Thrilling Tales buff for your entire team 100% of the time. That's really strong and pretty comfortable to play. But if Tenacity isn't your thing and you still want to get a good buff out of her, you can make good use out of the Instructor set. With Iron Sting, she can reach around 700 Elemental Mastery even though the set is only a 4 star rarity, and that'll jump to 820 after her first reaction. If you're running a reaction based team that uses characters that don't really scale off of attack like a Swirl team, then the Instructor set is incredibly useful. She does need to be on field to trigger the effect though, so for like 100% uptime she'll have to swap in every like 5 ticks of her skill I think. That's a little annoying, but in a quick swap team you wouldn't notice it. But speaking of teams, let's talk about what teams she actually works in, because I keep hearing people say she only has one team, and she doesn't. She has like 5, but only 3 are really accessible as of 2.7. So in my opinion, Shinobu basically has 5 types of teams. They are Mono Geo, Melee Swirl, Taser, Dendro Taser, and Dendro Overload. Please don't worry, the Dendro stuff here is all based on stuff existing in-game already, plus my own speculations. There are no leaks here. Mono Geo may surprise you as one of her best teams, but Shinobu really works well with Ito and Goro specifically. When Ito uses his burst, he takes increased damage, so to freely unga bunga, it's a good idea to have a shield. But rather than take Zhongli, you could just use crystallized shields. Especially if you're using Goro. 
Goro's burst sucks in crystallized shields periodically and uses them to extend its duration, so you can have a perpetual shield up if you can keep up your elemental application. This is where Shinobu is basically the best pick aside from Kokomi. Her skill has a really good AoE so she can consistently generate shards while both healing and buffing Ito, and it's mobile, which is great. Tenacity will also boost the crystallized shield's strength, and since Ito has high defense, the shield will feel just as strong as Zhang Li's minus his resistance shred. Or a little bit weaker, but you know what I mean. It's it's enough. If you compare Ito's damage while running Zhang Li's Shred versus Shinobu's Tenacity buff, you honestly won't notice much of a difference. And plus, Shinobu can really help break shields that Ito struggles with by using her burst, and she can keep the team's HP topped up easily. You can do the same thing with Noelle, but Noelle can generally heal herself, so it's kind of redundant. I've been basically running a team like this with Chi-Chi since Ito was first released, and Shinobu is better than Chi-Chi in every way possible on this team. I would try Kokomi, but I don't have her. Now, Melee Swirl is a team I haven't really seen anyone talk about, and I'm not really sure how practical it is, but it's been very fun to play. Essentially, it uses an on-field Sucrose, and maybe Hazo, as an on-field driver alongside Shinobu, Yelon, and an off-field Pyro unit. In this case, you could feasibly use Toma. In this situation, Shinobu can actually run a full Elemental Mastery Clam set for the combination of reactions and bubble pops, generating more overall damage for the team since three-fourths of the members won't benefit from the attack boost the Tenacity set would usually give. Clam increases her max healing, which gives you like 10 to 15k physical bubble pops every 10 seconds, which allows for a really aggressive playstyle for the animal carry, especially if you have a shield. Alternatively, if the team can function like a quick swap team, she can run the instructor set to buff the whole team for 120 elemental mastery, which is a significantly better swirl buff option. Kinda has to be a quick swap though, like I mentioned, because she kinda needs to be on field every 8 seconds or every 5 skill ticks to proc a reaction. Now for sure, her most common and most comfy team is going to be a taser comp, and in any taser team that doesn't run Kokomi, Shinobu is going to be the ultimate comfort pick. Comfort in play is extremely undervalued. Not every team can run an optimal rotation in every situation, and not every player is at the same skill level. Being able to have healing as a contingency plan is a really good thing, and that's part of what makes Kokomi Taser so strong. Having a variation of that is really nice, especially since it comes from a 4-star unit. But to get the most out of Shinobu's reactions, where all her damage comes from, a double Hydro team is better than a double Electro team, otherwise you end up getting reactions off of your second Electro unit, especially if they have fast application like Fischl. Now because Shinobu is a comfort pick, she is a total damage loss, but she's not a very big damage loss. Shinobu still manages to pull her weight with good reaction damage on elemental mastery builds, and she can still run the tenacity buff for the other units, which does help close the damage gap quite a bit, especially on units that can't snapshot like Xingqiu. But if you're running Yelon instead, well, the damage for you get from Tenacity isn't going to help you that much, and it is a bit of a weaker team, although it is very comfy to play. That said, I don't think Double Hydro will stay the best taser option for Shinobu's damage for very long. The reason for that is that Dendro is coming, and I think that's where Shinobu is really going to shine. Here's my logic. Electro currently lacks an amplifying reaction, and the last two Electro units that were released, which were Yai, Miko, and Shinobu, as well as Lisa, who has ties to Sumeru, all scale with Elemental Mastery in some respect, or in Lisa's case, it's just her Ascension stat. That strongly suggests to me that Dendro and Electro will have an amplifying type of reaction that scales on Elemental Mastery. Yes, that's speculation, but I think it's worth noting. Since Hydro and Electro can coexist on an enemy during Electro Charge, you could theoretically alternate back and forth between big Dendro and Electro reactions, possible Dendro and Hydro reactions, and Electro Charge all while swirling Hydro Resistance down with the Viridescent set. The more options a team has to provide opportunities for Shinobu to react, the better her value will be overall. And along that same line of thinking, I have to mention that I personally hate overload comps for her, and honestly, overload in general I really don't like, but most of my distaste comes from the fact that we have very few decent off-field pyro applicators, so our options are very limited, which makes for very inflexible playtime and testing, and it's just not fun. 
And all that's before you remember that Overload knocks enemies back. But Overload does have a really big multiplier on its overall damage, especially when compared to Electrocharged. You just need really reliable Pyro application in order to get access to it. Shockingly, Dendro actually gives us this opportunity by providing us with the Burning Reaction, which is already in the game so you can kinda test it out. Without getting too into the weeds and the intricacies of weighted elemental application, Dendro and Pyro together create a persistent Pyro Aura on the enemies that deals pitifully small amounts of damage, but constantly reapplies Pyro to the unit over time in large amounts, so it can't really be removed easily. That means that even a unit like Toma could provide enough field pyro application to trigger burning which could then be used in an overload comp for Shinobu, or another off-field damage dealer. Shinobu could even justify running a four-piece Thundering Fury or even a Crimson Witch set if that's all you have with full elemental mastery to get over 20,000 damage on her overload procs. That makes her justifiable as a sub-DPS beyond just being a healer especially since that doesn't take into account any Dendro Electro reaction damage that may or may not be there. Couple that with a little bit of crowd control and you have a pretty powerful team comp. I don't think it'll ever actually be like a meta team or anything, but I think it'll be nice to have expanded options and I think it does give her a lot of value. Okay, I think that was everything I wanted to say. If you made it this far, well, thank you very much. I hope Shinobu blesses your account so you can try her for yourself. Maybe you'll end up enjoying her as much as I do, because, like, sometimes I feel like I'm the only one who does enjoy her, and that she was exactly what I expected and exactly what I wanted, and I, I feel like I'm the only one, so join, join me, please. Because, you know, the bottom line is that Shinobu is fine. She's a good unit. I mean, she's not without her shortcomings, but she's still a good unit. She's not secretly busted, but she's definitely not trash, like the rumors say. She's just not what we're used to. And I think that's a good thing. Finding new ways to play is what makes the game fun. So thanks again for watching this entire video if you made it this far. I really appreciate you guys, so thank you. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go off and go work on my theories again, because that's what I really do. I don't theory craft numbers, I usually theory craft lore, but, uh, you know, just a little, little break, little breather in between, in between lore when the timeline's not kicking my ass. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. Okay, bye.